Hi, this is Shadi. So last night, Keenan Cornelius tagged me in this post. He was discussing American Jiu-Jitsu or the idea that Judo was established in the U.S. at least prior to the Gracie family or prior to the birth of Elio Gracie. And honestly, I don't know why he's uh, doing this, but from what I understand in the comments, there are people telling him about lineage and the lineage of his school so i don't know why he's going on this search however there is overwhelming evidence to support his claim actually and i will add to whatever he is uh, showing in this so i'll link his instagram post below for you to see it uh, clearly and uh, separately so um, but before i do that this idea that uh, american jiu-jitsu or brazilian uh, jiu jitsu all these things personally it's all judo and maybe some countries do maybe reflect a bit of their culture through their practice of judo like say the mongolians and the georgians they're showing their wrestling culture through judo yes okay but it is not a new martial art or a new style it's just a different expressions because we all come from different places uh, on earth and it's normal that we all handle it differently so uh, however I was genuinely surprised in the comments to see that people are still saying these kind of things I thought we had done away with this years ago and uh, but we should not forget that every day people are joining clubs dojos etc so it's always important to remind the people because you know, uh, you can't just say it years ago and then assume it's gone. At least that's the mistake I did. So, Yukio Tani, the game of jujitsu, 1906, guard play, uh, submissions from the guard, the open guard, uh, also the closed guard. You take it as a position to protect yourself, and from it, you can be highly offensive. Seven years before the birth of Elio, guillotine from the closed uh, guard. Again, you can see. A very basic yet effective things open guard assume this position when you are thrown and here you see that you keep your elbows and knees close together and tucked in here you see uh, grip fighting from the open guard pulling someone in uh, a lot of people still fall into the mistake of cross choking someone when they are in their guard and of course sweeps from the guard again this whole thing is just so old at this point a passing guard uh, toreando and here you see uh, the textbook of jujitsu by uenishi a year prior to the book so 1905 now granted these two books are mainly in europe these people went to the uk and all across europe however when it comes to the american continent and the usa there is a slightly a different story so we cannot talk about usa jiu-jitsu or judo without of course mentioning irving hancock so in simonbjj.com you see this article the man who introduced brazil to jiu-jitsu and you can pause and read but so maeda's trip and uh, his accolades in brazil were starting from 1914 till his death basically but 1908 1909 you can see advertisement for jujitsu fights and here you see next to him is higashi now higashi is a very i would say shady person we don't know much about his background uh we can know for sure that he is not a kodokan judoka yet he had the audacity to publish uh, this book, which had very little Kodokan Judo, like a lot of the handbooks I've discussed in the past from that time period. This is from 1905, and here are some of the stuff that he used to publish. So, basic self-defense, standing up, nothing much, uh, clearly doesn't know the depth of the Kodokan curriculum Again, these are just some of the self-defense techniques. So, we can say that in Brazil, at least before Maeda, before even Elio, there was jiu-jitsu being talked and uh, advertised. Now, let's talk about some actual 
people established. You have Captain Alan Smith, American World War One veteran. You can see in his book, The Secrets of Jiu-Jitsu, published in 1920, when Elio was seven years uh, old. He is one of the first Westerners to gain the black belt from the Kodokan, so in Japan, and of course served his country in the First World War. Here you see there is some ground technique uh, alongside with it. So you can see here the escapes from the back strangle, and then of course the Keisa Gitame here, other things like taking the back and uh, other things. So uh, one more thing I'd like to add, this is very uh, important. Uh, again, aside from the things that Keenan shared, like here, Lanius, in 1905, there is uh, the Detroit Press, August of 1905, shared that the US Naval Academy was training uh, jiu-jitsu under Japanese instructors, not Higashi, but so the Naval Academy in 1905 was already training in jiu-jitsu. I would imagine it's a similar style to what you see here in front of you, the hand-to-hand -hand combat with a little bit of ground as the the trend was at the time, you know, competition was not a thing yet. And um, here you can see that uh, jiu-jitsu in America and the continent itself was already established uh, prior. So it wasn't really Maeda. It's such a simple story to say at this point in time that Maeda came, he taught them, and now you have this great system, and the Elio invented the guard. It's not as simple. It's progressive. It's across many decades and generations. I'll give you an example. The Gracies, when they learned from Maeda students, they learned a lot of self-defense, which is still very much alive with them today. But the whole ground thing, it developed throughout many Japanese that has come uh, in the 10s and 20s and 30s, like the Ono brothers, Takeo Yano, uh, Omori, etc. Um, again, at this point, I feel like I'm just repeating things I've said years ago, but it's a good reminder to always uh, do this. And just to think that uh, people are still saying Elio created guard is wow. But Again, people are joining gyms and dojos every single day, so you cannot fault them. But uh, it's a good reminder. And here you see that um, it came across many things. Now, why the favorable submission game rather than the throwing like in judo? For many reasons, because you know people wanted the fight to go longer, especially those who went to, uh, outside and how they were still training uh, in Japan. They would just throw keep continuing, keep going until someone really forfeits the fight. It wasn't really like today. The Ippon and how to finish a fight was really for safety reasons. People got concussed. People were getting brutally injured. The mats were not like today. And so these rules progressively got together. Also, you know, value to though the throw obviously is not going to be the, finish the finisher. So the ground was obviously favored, so you train mostly how to take someone to the ground, tap them. It's all very progressive, it's all very nuanced. So this romantic idea of how it came to be, it's just simply not true. However, if it opens up to research, then that's great. So if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.